fair while since I truly knew where we were. Knew as in, could name check a pub, not know as in, next junction. Pitch black, for the most part, on a thinly spread slice. The final pit stop before we're back home in London. Peterborough Services, extra, A1M, junction 17. Put the handbrake on and partially deflate. Conceal a yawn and then unclip my seatbelt. Nearly there, my love. We're making good time. Steer the legs of a newborn calf towards the neon. Allow high street chains to lull me with a fuzzy sense of home. Give wide berth to the hives shipping Mackies to the van. Put my mask on, which steams up my glasses. Single lane, we still hold hands and try to follow markings. Some are social distancing, others are oblivious. Hello, can I have a small black Americano, please? We are 29 hours newlywed, give or take 10 minutes. adrenaline fueled sojong slash elopement. You stroke my hand, compare the rings, we chuckle at our selfies. Memories reverberate like pr playground laughter. I see no future anywhere but your eyes. I find no solace anywhere but your arms. I'll pop you some beers in the freezer when we get back. On the plasmas, there's carnage over in Washington. Trump supporters rioting at the Capitol. Far-right insurgents serving temporary distraction from this new strain of the virus that's tearing us to shreds. The A1M to the A14 to the M11. The M11, the North Circular and then Barking Road. 31 hours newlywed, put the handbrake on and sigh. As long as I'm with you, my love, I know that I'll get by. Hello everybody, welcome to the 33rd Insta session. My name is Matt Abbott, I have been doing these since the beginning of May last year. I didn't think I'd still be doing them now, but I'm very pleased that I am, because I'm excited um, to welcome tonight's guest. So tonight's guest is Harris Ahmed from Bradford. Um, Harris was one of the poets commissioned by Fly the Flag to write a poem for World Human Rights Day back in December, um, with his poem The Doomsday Clock News. Uh, I've seen Harris perform live in person, if you remember that, a live wire event in Leeds, and I'm very excited to see what he brings to the table tonight. So I shall him. Here we go. Harris also had a, a crowdfunding campaign for his debut collection, Is It, which is coming out next year. Hello, mate. How are you doing? How are you doing? Yeah, I was, I was, I've got my hood up because uh, lockdown haircut hasn't done, done me the same look as you, apparently. Mate. To, my, honestly, I don't know what to do with it. It's like I've got a shit Beatles wig on. It's terrible. Honestly, yeah, I can't wait for barbers to uh, to reopen. That's all I'm going to say. Mine's... I know, yeah. Also... How are you doing, man? You all right? Yeah, I'm really excited to be on here because uh, obviously, as, as you know, I've done Life Live. I've kind of followed poetry stuff and here, there and everywhere. So when you DM'd me, I was like, you know, over the moon to be invited on. It's been like, oh, cool. I've had loads of good news like in the last few weeks. So like, this is just another, another one to add to the list i guess so oh that's good to know that's good to know things looking up then i know obviously it's a very strange time to be starting your career but you seem to have been busy yeah as you obviously we spoke at the start of i think the first lockdown as i wanted to do the book and obviously no one expected lockdown to go nearly as like long as it has done so yeah you're right being able to do stuff like you know fly the flag and doing stuff um you know just before lockdown, sorry, with the uh, live wire and just performing. Yeah. I miss it in person. It's not the same on Zoom, uh, but it's a temporary makeshift. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when did you actually, with the poems in, is it, when did you write those? Were they mo were they written just before lockdown or was it sort of everything you'd written today? Or? So it's, a, it's an interesting one. So literally just before lockdown, I'd got out of a weird relationship and... Right neither of us knew it was going to be locked down so it was going from speaking to someone pretty much every day like for hours at a time to suddenly being in complete isolation by the way you're going to see my cat probably come in the frame <laughs> nice and he <laughs> and yeah so i just i needed something to occupy myself uh and i just wrote i, I pretty much wrote the entire thing in a matter of yeah. uh, a few weeks uh i wrote oh, okay. like two poems that are like from before lockdown because originally the book was it was going to be like a present so it was going to be like a sort of not an anniversary present but like a just a present uh and then obviously that's when the relationship started to take a nosedive so i was like well i've written all these poems so you know i'm gonna put them to some use um but yeah so that's, that's kind of what prompted the book uh so yeah so you crowdfunded it you were really successful you raised your target and exceeded it in a couple of weeks but yeah. obviously you've been forced to put it on hold and yeah. sort of wait 
So now that you've been forced to put it on hold and look back at it, do you view the poems differently? Or like, is it just sort of like a time capsule for you at the start of lockdown or? See, it's a good question. I was thinking about this myself. I was re-looking at, re at the draft. Uh, I think there's a few things. So yeah, as you say, it's kind of like a time capsule. Because of the, the delay that I put on it, I'm adding another 10 or so poems to the thing just because, just because like, you know, there's, I've got a different mindset on the entire thing as well. Um, I'm yeah. kind of growing up in between. Um, there are poems that I like to rework a little bit, so I'm probably going to do a little bit of tweaking. Um, yeah. I've got a lot more critical over my own work because I think I'm not very, I'm not a per perfectionist, and the people who know me in here, I'm quite, you know, all guns blazing, very spontaneous. But when it comes to my work, I take kind of a lot of care in it, and I think I'm I'm seeing that in the book. And yeah, you're right. It, I do have a bit of a mixed mixed outlook on it. I would say. Cool. Well, it's interesting. It's just interesting seeing them, like, because I think everybody views their pre-lockdown work differently after lockdown for one way or another. In, for, sorry, for one reason or another. So no, I was just curious, like, yeah. Um, do you fancy uh, getting us started with a poem? I was going to say, I originally was going to do this one last, but because we're talking about the book, I might as well open with it. Um, this is cool. the one I was, I was talking to you about. It. Um, this was the one, um, it was the one that I closed with. And something special about that live wire was that she was actually there. And it was the first and the only time that I performed for her with with a poem. Like, right. Cuts me on. Um, so, yeah, th this poem is kind of like sentimental to me, especially because just of the occasion. Cool. So it's called Lie on Your Boat. Lie on your boat. When the world takes a hold, when warm conversations turn cold, lie on your boat. It's hard when the world rocks it to and fro. See how it goes to lie on my butt there's days where i can't cope and thoughts trigger me like a sniper down a scope i zone out and miss those moments i try and hold on long after they've gone in each tear that i shed release fear i seethe here in my bed i concede to these demons these architects of evil i'm here demeaning myself trying to define operationalize the meaning of self all i know is caffeine's unideal for my health i'm overthinking i'm in over my head lie on my boat i might sink with the ship instead i sit in my room and not want to perform and these thoughts of the norm say i'm done then conform We've got to the stage where I'm performing on stage and I'm trying to gauge whether people understand what it is that I say. I joke about how I'm extremely sensitive to coffee as an attempt to distract from the thoughts that swamp me. Feelings dissipate, which in turn frustrates. Imagine feeling hate, but not knowing what you hate. This emptiness and anger, happiness is dangled. And just as I get comfortable, that happiness is wrangled, mangled, tangled and tied my own noose. For an extrovert, you know, I'm a bit of a recluse. And then you pull me back into the conversation in the way that you do. Lie on your butt as long as you do too. Thanks. Quality. <laughs> I nice. Joining in there, you seem to be feeling the emotions too. I like it. I like the cat's contribution. I thought it was good. This is the, uh, I'm going to give a sneak peek of the book actually. This is the, oh, nice. the dedicated illustration. So it's all, it's entirely illustrated. So it's kind of like the, the poem kind of reads there, then, you know, yeah. people lying on their butt. Um, I'm giving a bit away there, but yeah, I, I really, oh. it's one of my favourite of the book. It was, it was such a poignant representation of what it is. So, yeah. I do, uh, yeah, I do remember that getting a, a rapturous applause at Livewire back in the day. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. absolutely. It was like years ago, man. It genuinely just yeah. time flies. It was, if I'm not mistaken, it was October 2019. Was it the first one with um, Selena Godden, right? No, it was... Oh, it was December, wasn't it, with Joelle? December, yeah. yeah. Well, we had to nip off because she had a train to get um, and she didn't know her way around Leeds, but... Um, yeah. You know, so December 2019, mad. Yeah, just over a year ago. Yeah, the same <laughs> was, um, but yeah. 2019. Thanks, Billy. Awesome. Um, but yeah. So what um, what do you think it was that brought you to poetry specifically? Like, was it uh, from a from a musical background, from reading poetry? Like, I'm interested. See, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> like it's it's this thing with with me and girls. Like, um, I was always like infatuated with sort of rhyming from a young age. Like, just just always liking how words. Like, some people like maths because it clicks in their head. Some people like science because they like exploring stuff. And I and I just always got on with words. Um, and I think, you know, whether it was the cat in the heart, Dr. Seuss sort of stuff, I, I was always 
experimenting with different combinations. And um, yeah, <laughs> it just so happened in year seven, there was this person that I like. And I just thought, you know what? I'm going to write a song. Wrote a song. Um, absolutely cringe in hindsight. Um, didn't get the girl, but I, I, you know, it birthed the start of you know what has been a, an amazing journey that I would never have expected to go on. And actually, Kirsty, who we all kind of know and love in here, uh, shout out Kirsty. Um, we kind of just stumbled. It was she was in she was in John Street Market in Bradford, and she was kind of like uh, there was a little production, um, and I was just inspired by something she said, and I just jotted something on a bit of paper, showed her, and she kind of just encouraged me to perform and. Uh, performed once on a on a market stand and kind of just took off from there with the brick box with commonwealth with so i'm, I'm just i'm just lucky that bradford is tight knit enough to have such a brilliant circle and then obviously yeah. firstly i was introduced to you and just you know it's, it's kind of branched off from there so it's kind of like i kind of went through a bit of a gap but then eventually things started sliding together and opportunities just came left right and center so quite yeah good, really. I, I definitely yeah. did this by myself I was going to ask about Bradford, actually. It's got such an amazing, vibrant literary scene, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, and Kirsty's 10 out of 10, absolutely. 100%. Cool, um, great. Fancy sharing another poem? Uh, yeah, so this one is... I think I've gone for all kind of longer ones. This one is... I don't want to say too much. It's for a project I'm doing in relation to um, anxiety awareness, and I might be working with a mental health charity on getting this out, but I can't really guarantee anything just yet. But cool. this one is uh, it's completely true. Um, I have bouts of insomnia uh, and, you know, I've kind of got like a running with mental health throughout my entire adult life and, you know, younger. And I thought, you know what, instead of just kind of sitting in that and kind of just dwelling on it, I thought I'd turn it into something. Uh, I think as you'd, you'd agree that, you know, sometimes it's better to put, put our pain as it feels into words. Uh, it's just called Just. You lay somewhat motionless with that far away look in your eye. You feel the room compress, the duvet is not all that you hold tight. And suddenly you relax as you allow yourself to cry. But ironically, you can't speak because your throat's just way too dry. You find your favorite playlist and press resume on Spotify. The music just explains it, but it doesn't make it fine. You hate it when you're wasted and it's not fun just being high and the problems never leave you, it's no way to live your life. You're shaking from the caffeine that was meant to get you by, and it's light outside the window that you've been staring out all night. Awake but just too tired, but you're drained but also wired, and living life is the same in this decayed state of mind. And you're all cried out, and you're trying to find out why you can't stop pressing rewind and just sort your life out. What's the worst decision that you've made of all time? And when will all this change? Can you please send me a sign? The monologue turns frantic as you begin to panic and feeling like Titanic and sinking is hard to manage. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Take a look around the room. What things can you pick out? The walls, they stop. And the room's not shaking. Realigning yourself with every breath you're taking. I had a panic attack. I stayed up all night. I stared at the wall wondering why things just don't seem right. If you hear this and relate, whoever you might be, wherever you may live, repeat after me. These simple words to remember, these words are key. I refuse to be defined by my anxiety. Thanks. Nice. Uh, Top word. Yeah, I think I think it's important that we can be cliche about this sort of stuff. And there are times where I'm purposefully cliche. But I think sometimes that is, I think the reason things are cliche is because they're so relatable that people think that they're overdone. Um, and I've, I've sent it to a few close people and they've all kind of positively received it. So yeah. I'm, I'm quite proud of that one. But, but yeah, no, good feedback. Yeah, no, it was great. It was great. I was going to ask, what, what, time, what, time, what time of day do you usually write? I know that might sound like a weird question, but I'm curious. See, I something I, I challenge myself to do is to not force myself to write because it's, for me, like, I know there's people who can write a poem a day and it's like, if I'm not feeling it, I'm not feeling it. And inspiration will just take me whenever I can be yeah. in a and be like, oh my God, I could turn that into a, into a poem. I was on Twitter, like, yesterday and I was scrolling and I saw something like... Um, we're too sad and drained to be hating one another. Um, and I was like, 
poetry opportunity. So I don't really have a specific time. Like, you know, poems like Just, that, that was written literally as, as it was happening. So, you know, yeah. 3, 4 a.m. Um, sometimes I'll write. I don't, I don't really write in the morning just because I'm not a morning person in all, in all aspects. Um, so, yeah, just whenever, really. I don't really have a fixed time. Yeah, yeah. I was just curious because, like, um, obviously anxiety is a shite mare and in some near is a shite mare. It's something I sometimes experience, but the only benefit I've ever had from it is sometimes writing at 2 a.m. is, like, the best writing because you sort of you lose that veil of inhibition. You almost, like, peel back the layers and just go straight to it. Um, but not always. Sometimes when, it's cool. But, uh... <laughs> writing, um, it often used to be a thing where, like, after 10 or 11 p.m., if I was to write something down, it would just... And I'd read it in the morning after, I'd be like, none of this made sense. Why am I, Why did I write it? But I think, yeah, like like you say, sometimes 2 a.m., the more you do it, the more in tune you become with things like that. So, yeah, yeah no, I, I think you're absolutely right. It, it hits and miss, really, but I think that's just writing as a whole. Yeah, fair play, fair play. Great. Um, well, do you fancy sharing another? Yeah, yeah, I've got, I've got a whole little list going. But, um, yeah, yeah this, this one was just, I didn't really challenge myself to, to, to do anything. It's just, just pen to pad, really, it just came out. Uh, it's kind of another love poem. Um, this one is about a specific person. Uh, and I think that person knows exactly who it, who it is about them, but it's just just poetry. Um, this one doesn't have a title because I'm shit for titles. Um, as, as, but yeah. I miss the mornings where I'd pause and wonder how my soul felt so warm in autumn. Now it's as cold as a corpse. Lucid thoughts of losing it, I could use nothing more. Instead, it's not unusual to be self-fed excuses, but it's useless, though. Inebriated by the smoke, falling deeper with each talk and penning poems and keystrokes and listening to chart music. When we sleep, where do we go? From stroking egos to clothes taken off like liners in Heathrow, what was meant to last an eve stretched to a sequel. To wondering how my life ever had a prequel, she's evil. To tell the truth, it was deceitful. I never felt like your equal, your biggest takeaway. I was the same, I was the game that you've completed. The silence is far from peaceful. Where two impatient people, imprisoned by imperfect minds, imprints of imagined impossibilities, my mistake meant you missed being mine. Muddle moments, miscalculations, words are spoken, but no conversation. And if it's just our nature, then it's about conservation. Overgrown emotions, thorns laced in the vegetation, perennial poison poised for a lack of explanation, pricked by pupils to induce dilation, held by the hum of a healing heart, safeties, a forgotten saviour. Now I stumble into a slumber to suffer, free falling with no hope of a buffer, in a place where we can still be with each other, and you're more than just a seasonal lover. Rocks me to know we'll never recover, I hear your name and I can't help but to shudder. I turn around and I'm coerced by the cover. I wipe a tear as the demons hover. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Nice. I like that. A lo lovely pace to it. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's alliteration and assonance are just things that I like to mess around with. Like, yeah. Sometimes it works. Sometimes, I don't know, this one was kind of forced in some aspects, but others, like, it just tied together. It's, hi, Nabila. Uh, but yeah, no, um, but yeah, no it, some things just tie in together and it just happened to work, really. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes you can spend, you know, 50 hours crafting a poem and sometimes you spend five minutes and it's bang it straight out yeah just um yeah cool I, yeah, no, I, yeah. the thing is my my little kind of weakness is i tend to leave things last minute a lot with my writing and it sometimes prompts really good stuff and often can lead to you know last minute pressure um but yeah no um you're absolutely right sometimes 50 hours i think the longest i spent is a few days and if i think for me because i'm so impatient if um if like it gets to a point where i'm like you know what this isn't gonna work i just scrap it i'm very very like impatient with my work um, i hear you yeah. no i know 50 hours was maybe a bit yeah well, no. i don't know sometimes but um yeah you can't really write without a deadline the more you write the more you need yeah the deadline. maybe that's just me i don't know but sometimes for me if i'm if i write so sometimes I want to be consistent and if I leave it for too long then I lose the the idea and I lose the emotion that I was in when I started writing it oh totally yeah seems inconsistent yeah. I just yeah sometimes I end up jotting things that turn into like almost two separate poems and then I'll take chunks of stuff and I'll put it with other stuff and just end up piecing together stuff like jigsaws but, but yeah no like 
Yeah, you've got to do that. I think when you're writing, even if even if you know it's not the exact right phrase or the exact right language, you've got to trust your subconscious. But like the moment you're in, he's giving you something. So you let that come out and then do the tweaking afterwards, isn't it? Yeah, no, that totally makes sense, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, it's 10 to, so if there's any that you definitely want to share, uh, you've got 10 minutes. If not, I don't want to put pressure on, I'm just letting you know. Totally cool. I had one more on the site list anyway, so it's kind of nice. Cool. Um, Sometimes you actually, yeah, absolutely, Aaron. Um, yeah, carousels and Primark gloves. So this this ended up becoming like my signature poem. Uh, this 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 is from the book, and it's kind of like the leading sort of one from the book. I'll show you the illustration afterwards. But this this was probably my favorite poem that I've written in like living, not living memory, but very recent memory. I'd say this is also pre lockdown, but this is one of the poems that I spoke about that was before the you know the everything kind of went to shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, cool. Um, I feel so insignificant. Time feels infinite as I watch our feet get lifted. Your eyes as blue and bright as the Christmas lights in this blustery night, but that's all right because you're by my side on this carousel ride. I won't lie, I was terrified. What if the vibe wasn't quite right? Or I said something that you wouldn't like, like I didn't cry when Mufasa died. True story. Some jokes aside, your time was mine, and as heat will rise, that time was flying. I found myself lying when I said I wasn't cold. You knew I could see from your smiling. Though your company was more than enough, you shared a pair of your Primark gloves, and our improvised hugs swept my worries beneath the rug. You read me like an open book. And I'm not used to laughing like I did. If people stir the pot, well, then you lift the lid if you hadn't noticed you're so gifted. Because it's optimistic for me to be optimistic. But you colour me happy and my spirit's uplifted. You listened to the way I listen. You fizz in my mind like a coke addiction. Feed me jokes like a dope prescription. You're my drug, I say, as I stand in the kitchen. And I flick back to you kicking my bag and refusing to remove your new jumper's price tag and you not letting me buy you that scrub from Lush. Your face so pale, but your cheeks were flushed. And our first kiss in the most romantic of places On this rocky road of mine, you are my oasis I hate the distance, don't mean footsteps I mean heart spaces, your giggles and emanating fragrance Our goodbye was the imperfect cadence A fragile silence, a paper wafer I signed you secrets like a data waiver For a first date, you really made a statement Thank you, and on, this is the illustration for it It's kind of based on an actual, an actual image if, oh, I, cool. if I put the two side by side, you see the, the similarities. But yeah, it's taken literally yeah, yeah. straight from a photograph. Um, but yeah, that, that's probably one of my favourite poems that I've written. And who illustrated it? Uh, so I actually, my friend, my friend from school, uh, her name's Shella, um, really talented. We literally had a, we had, we had a session where I kind of went over kind of, this was obviously before, before the covid so i was happy to go over um but we just kind of like this is what we want to do this these are the these are the words what can we come up with and we kind of just cool. binged binged an entire book illustration um there's 23 illustrations so far obviously with the extra 10 or so um so yeah there's, there's plenty of pretty unique illustrations i wanted it to be very similar uh, like kind of similar in terms of style and accessible i didn't want anything necessarily elaborate or over the top it's, it just does the job really um and i think that combined with the words makes for somewhat a decent combination so cool but yeah I don't, don't. so when do you reckon we'll be able to see it or have you just got to wait till lockdown clears i keep pushing the deadline back um because i don't know i i feel very angsty about releasing a product in the middle of a pandemic i know with obviously the recent roadmap that's been outlined to kind of get out of lockdown there's a bit of hope um Originally, it was meant to go out on my birthday last year. Um, potentially, maybe autumn this year. I'd say at the earliest. I don't. I really don't want it to go beyond this year. Um, just yeah. I think at that point, it just loses momentum. Um, obviously, there will be extra work put in because I'm going to add some more poems and illustrations. I'm probably yeah. going to more money in and just then because it was like two thousand five hundred that we raised. Um, yeah. That's all in kind of savings that I've kind of put with another company. It's so, like I literally don't have any access to that. Um, so like probably going to try and get another one thousand five hundred um, together, just see something um, you know decent. Because obviously I have a whole list of things I want to add. You know, we've got posters, some cool ideas for sort of unique merch. Just got to capitalize on it. Really. But but yeah, I, I want it to be a good product. So even if it does end up being a bit longer, I want it to be the best work possible. Fair play, man. Yeah. yeah.
I know, of it. I remember messaging you beforehand because I, I kind of look up to you as a, as a, as a writer. Um, and you were kind of a bit like, you know, you might want to be a bit more careful. And I feel like, I don't know, I think that feeds into my desire into just doing it. Um, but yeah, no, you, you were absolutely right. And it did make me think about it throughout. Like maybe you were, like, as you said at the start, taking a step back and reevaluating the poetry and what you put. Because it's really easy to obsess over a project. And then when you look back on it, you're like, oh, maybe I should have left it a bit longer. But yeah. Um... Well, I mean, first of all, I would have done exactly the same as you. If I was in your position, I would have done it. Yeah. And to be fair, like, it's nothing against, it's, it's always just like, you know, your first collection, you've generally, people spend a few years and you've sort of got, it's like when you're in a band, it's like you've got your whole career to write your first album and you're like, shit, I've got to write the second one. So yeah. that's all I was saying, like, you take your time. But, like, I, I totally admire yeah, what you did. I totally. Criticism. No, absolutely not. It was just like, yeah. it was always like a challenge accepted type moment. And I think that's almost kind of what partially prompted me to do it. Um, but, yeah, no, it, 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 was a good, it was a good project. And I think it really did encapsulate what I wanted to convey. Um, yeah. I just need polishing, like I say. But I think once it's all done, it'll be brilliant. So... Yeah, I'm sure it will. I look forward to seeing it. Yeah. Sure. There's a camp again coming for a last minute. Um, well, if you've got if you fancy it, you've probably got time for one more short one, but um, if you don't if you don't fancy it, it's entirely up to you. Uh, I'm happy to kinda of lead out with like one more perhaps. Um I'll probably, Ooh, okay. I'll probably find this one. Uh let me have a look. Uh, Give the people what they want. You've had lots of nice comments and uh, uh love right. hearts and all that. I'll read another one. I'll read another one from the book because, you know, yeah. you're like, uh, let's have a look. Um, let's have a quick look. Um, okay, right. This one is a very short one. This is probably my favourite illustration in the book too. It's very short. It's called Dark Room. Basically, she, um, this person did a lot of film photography and All right. spent a lot of time in the dark room developing photos. Uh, very therapeutic. Like it's, I, I, it's nice bringing back vintage stuff. And I think film photography yeah. is definitely on the rise. But this one's a lot shorter to the other poems. You asked if photography was art. And I thought, not art like you. Art being subjective, and I know for certain nobody holds the view that I do. It's funny how in the dark room you shed light on my soul. You miss the bigger picture, the brighter sides, more than exposure and aperture. Love isn't designed to be captured because love's not designed at all. That's it. And um, this, this is the illustration. Um, Love that. I'm glad we got that one. Yeah. Oh, nice. It's so cool. It's nice. so actually the, the camera she used. So it's, an, it's an Olympus OM10. So it's got the oh, yeah. 10. So he literally got a picture and traced it. And like obviously it's got the pit, it's got the poem either side of it. Uh, so yeah, no, I'm I'm really excited for the book because it, it's going to look so good when it's finally on. Yeah, hey, totally. It. Yeah, but but yeah, no, that's probably one of my favorite, if not the favorite, illustration of the book. But yeah, that's be, two minutes yeah. there. Um, cool. Well I, worth the wait, I reckon. It'd be well worth the wait. And I'm hopefully I'll be able to see it launched in Bradford. We'll see. Yeah, I had I, had, I was in talks with Waterstones, which is partly why I wanted to wait because I, I had a. Like the the company that I'm working with, they were kind of saying something about possibly getting it launched with Waterstones. And obviously, we can't do that. I don't want to do it over Zoom. So fingers crossed, yeah. that somewhat decent publicised launch. So, cool. um, but yeah, cool. Yeah, um, Chelsea. Yeah, <laughs> I just want to say thank you for having me. By the way, I know we've got a minute left. Um, like I said, no, no worries, man. I'm a fan of thank you. Nymph and folks do, and you know, life by. I'm looking forward to getting back into the to the live scene. I'm sure you are too. But uh, yeah. But yeah, um, cool. Thanks. Thank you, mate. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Well, yeah, great poems. Thank you very much for your poems and your chat and your time. Brilliant. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in. I'll see you in Bradford. Awesome. Yeah, look after yourself, mate. Take care. All right, mate. Take care. Bye. So that was the fantastic Harris Ahmed. Uh, give him a follow, um, and keep your eye out for his the collection we've been speaking about, which is called Is It, which will hopefully be coming later this year. Um, and make sure you join us next week. So same time, same place. Next week, we've got the wonderful Sophie Sparham uh, performing. Sophie is a fantastic poet from Derby who's got a collection coming out very soon on Verve Poetry Press. So make sure you join us for that one at uh, 7.30pm. My name is Matt Abbott. We are Names and Thugs. Cheers. See you later. Yeah.